Well, with this year just starting, we thought it'd be fitting to take a look at some of the most anticipated films of 2023. From reboots to sequels, all the way to original films with lots of buzz. This list will be based off of fan anticipation and hype. These aren't films that I am necessarily hyped for, although there are a few on here where that is indeed the case. Before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like this type of content and want to see more. Let me know below which movies you're hyped for come 2023. Boo is Afraid, starring Joaquin Phoenix. I'm a fan of Ari Aster's previous works. I think he offers such a unique, unsettling style to his horror films, and this one just seems like a wild trip that stays true to the director's token style, which I've been a fan of for quite some time. Since Hereditary and Midsummer, many people have been eyeing this one in suspense. It also stars Phoenix as the lead, which always draws buzz. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on this one come April. Next is the newest addition to the popular action series John Wick with John Wick 4. With the lead Keanu Reeves returning, he's also joined in by Lawrence Fishburne, Bill Skarsgård, and Lance Reddick. Many fans of the series are excited. I can't say that the John Wick series has been a complete ace so far, but this one looks to provide the same awesome action sequences of the last one with other additions to the cast. We'll see if they can work their magic one more time. Next is Dune Part 2. Two years ago, Dune was highly anticipated as a classic sci-fi story based off the iconic novel, but Denis Villeneuve's first film only covered a piece of the story. Dune, Dune 2 looks to continue the saga with full force and an ensemble cast, along with some of the same cast as the last film, such as Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya, comes a new set of faces like Florence Pugh, Austin Butler, Christopher Walken, and others. I thought the first one was really solid, and I'm excited to see the story come into full effect in this new version. Knowing Villeneuve's track record, the masses have high hopes. Next up is another try at a dying franchise. I thought they had claimed Saab was over, but it is back once again with Saw 10. I'm actually a fan of the franchise, but with these last few movies, specifically Spiral, which was absolutely terrible, I hope they go back to the original plotline. So far, a small cast has been assembled, one of which is Tobin Bell, who plays John Kramer, aka Jigsaw. We'll see what they can pull off with this newest addition to the series. I'm praying they don't put themselves in a reverse bear trap. So it has been quite some time since the Hunger Games movie franchise ended, but just like Harry Potter, it will return it this year with a spin-off slash prequel titled The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The movie will star some big names like Rachel Zegler, Peter Dinklage, Viola Davis, Bern Gorman, and Jason Schwartzman. They haven't revealed much, but fans are surely thirsty for more. I'm just hoping it's not another cash grab that throws the source material aside just so they could squeeze a little more out of a big name franchise like this one. We will have to see. Next up is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. As the first of many highly anticipated superhero flicks, comes the newest installment to the Guardians franchise. As with a lot of Marvel features, these tend to stir up a lot of buzz anticipation, especially if it's a fan favorite. Personally, I think the Guardians movies are some of the best that Marvel has to offer. I really do like the cast and characters. James Gunn has a solid track record. This one seems to tick all the boxes from humor to action to emotional sequences and all. Marvel nowadays can be a hit or miss, but hopefully under Gunn's supervision, Guardians delivers once again. Next up, we have the controversial and anticipated, for a variety of reasons, Disney's reboot of The Little Mermaid. As with Disney's typical pandering agenda and obsession of rebooting classic animated tales, comes their live action version of The Finned Princess. I've been pretty done with Disney's remakes and reboots for a while now, with none of their live action features really accomplishing much other than inflated box office numbers. As with everything Disney related, people are divided on Halle Bailey as Ariel, not to be confused with Halle Berry, which is a very similar name, alongside Melissa McCarthy and others. Oof, this one is going to be a rough one, but none, but nonetheless, many people are anticipating this one for both positive and negative reasons. Next, we have a sequel to Marvel's animated hit, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. The first one wowed audiences with its groundbreaking story and incredible animation, using various styles to convey Miles Morales' story with a unique flavor across the Spider-Verse seems to top the animation style of the first, 
in a colorful bouquet of visuals. The first one was great, and I can't wait to see this one on the big screen. After the lackluster 2008 addition to the series, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, people thought that Indy had retired the whip once and for all. But they were wrong, as Harrison Ford returns one more time in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Under the direction of James Mangold, they aim to wrap up the story in a nostalgic and action-packed adventure starring Phoebe Waller-Bridge and Mads McLesson, among others. We know how bad reboots or sequels can be, but let's see if they can properly send off a classic character, Indiana Jones. The last time Tom Cruise was on the big screen, he rocked the box office with one of the best reboots slash sequels we've ever seen with Top Gun Maverick. But a little before that, Cruise was tearing it up as Ethan Hunt in the long-running action franchise, Mission Impossible. In my opinion, Mission Impossible continues to be an excellent action series that seems to deliver more and more with every film. Dead Reckoning Part 1 is set to come out in July and promises to bring the same level of crazy stunts and spy antics as the others. Fans of the series like me are highly anticipating this one. I also have to give them praise for properly making a, a trailer. If you want to see how to really make an effective trailer, watch the official teaser trailer for Dead Reckoning. Next up is Christopher Nolan's latest epic, Oppenheimer, and perhaps maybe the most anticipated movie on this list, with a huge cast starring Cillian Murphy, Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Matt Damon, Florence Pugh, Gary Oldman, Rami Malek, and so many others, the film is stunting an A-list ensemble, as with most Nolan films. Nolan fans are holding their breath for July to come as soon as possible to see the powerful and emotional saga of Robert Oppenheimer and his nuclear bombs. Funny enough, this next title comes out the same exact day as Oppenheimer, Barbie. <clears throat> so you can wash out the radioactive residue with the colorful new comedy by Greta Gerwig. Gerwig has a solid track record and will be putting her comedic wit to the test with an original retelling of the Barbie story. The film stars Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling, alongside Helen Mirren, Will Ferrell, Michael Cera, and so many others. It appears to be a colorful musical slash adventure-esque movie. It's going to be funny to see this transposed against the dark biopic of Christopher Nolan. Next up, Revere director David Fincher will be returning this year with an action thriller by the name of The Killer. The movie will star Michael Fassbender as The Killer and Tilda Swinton, among others. After a fateful near miss, an assassin battles his employers and himself on an international manhunt he insists isn't personal. The premise seems really intriguing, and behind the genius mind of Fincher, this could be a dark thriller to remember. And finally, the last film goes to one of the best directors ever, Martin Scorsese. The movie will follow a 1920s blood-filled Oklahoma as it depicts the serial murders of the members of the oil-wealthy Osage Nation. The film has an absolutely all-star cast, including Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro, which are two frequent Scorsese pairings. It will also star Jesse Plemons, Brendan Fraser, Lily Gladstone, and many more. I'm a huge fan of Scorsese, and I have no doubt that he will once again deliver with this new crime thriller. Well, there you have it, just a few of the most anticipated movies of 2023. Please let me know below which ones you are most excited for, and if there's any we missed that you are eager to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching, and be sure to hit that sub button to stay up to date with the latest in movie news, tier lists, reviews, and so much more. Until next time, this has been Placid 5.